Okay. Comenzamos a grabar, es correcto. Ya, yeah, ok, claro. Welcome everybody to AIU Symposium on my legacy to future generations. We're going to start here in about 10, 15 minutes. So welcome, come in, get yourselves comfortable. We're just getting started. My name is Dr. Edward Lambert. I guess I should uh, rename myself so you can see who I am. And uh, this, is a, this is an important topic. We look forward to this. We have many presenters today. Our first presenter is getting ready. Pastor Dr. Joshua Babatunde, getting ready to start in about 10, 15 minutes. And this is one of those symposiums, this topic, when we talk about our legacy to future generations, this is one of those topics of wisdom, of what, how are we going to live in the best way so that we create a better world? And that's gonna be our legacy. And in order to leave a better world for a future generation, that takes wisdom. If we don't have wisdom, we're just gonna live for ourselves, use resources, and leave a mess. So how can we live with wisdom? This is gonna be the key issue in today's topic. How do we live with wisdom? To give of ourselves to a future generation that we haven't even seen yet. We don't even know what's gonna happen in the world. But still, we're going to leave a world to them and the world we build up for ourselves and our families and our community, that's the world that the future generations are gonna be born into and live. So what do we wanna do? This requires wisdom, the wisdom of the ages. So we're just getting started here and really looking forward to these presentations. And with us today is Tutor Leda Molinares. Hello. Hello, good morning. And I can't see everybody who's here because I, I kind of see my presentation on the screen. So it's good to see everybody. And we have a chat. Remember, we have a chat. Ugh. So if you have comments, questions, you can write them into chat. You can say hi to everybody in chat, say where you're from, welcome everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody's in, there we go, we have some, we have a couple. Yeah, people are opening up chat now, welcome. Jesse, Tom, hello. Good morning, Dr. Lambert and everyone else. I'm speaking from Guyana. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Dr. Lambert. Good morning. It is afternoon here. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's about 1.30 p.m. Oh, that's a perfect time of day. Yeah. When I reach 1.30, I'll be awake. I'm sleeping Thank right you. now. <laughs> outside where I am outside it's completely dark the sun has not even not even close to rising yet okay hello it's 7 51 in the evening here Elaine Elaine where are you from 
Jamaica? No. Or maybe more east of that. Jeffrey and Buze. Malawi. South Sudan. Bernadette. San, San, Saint Lucia, yes. You're a little bit east of Jamaica. And the lanes from the Philippines. Oh, wow. What time is it in the Philippines? Republic of Ireland, eight minutes to the hour of 1 p.m. Limson, Machibiza, Zimbabwe, almost two o'clock, 1400 hours, 7.51 p.m. in the Philippines. Wow. Yeah, so the Philippines is on the exact opposite of the world, the, the other side. Greetings from Freetown, Sierra Leone, Joseph Peter Kai Kai. Rose, Rose Brima from Ghana. Hello, hello. I recognize these names. Okay, so we're going to be getting ready to start here. I'm really looking forward to this symposium. We're going to have some great presentations. Now, one thing I want to say is we received 100 proposals for presentations in this conference, 100. And we had to select just a few of them. So we have nine today. We're actually going to have in three more weeks, we're gonna have, an, <clears throat> we're gonna have another conference, another symposium with some other presenters that presented. And then three weeks after that, we're gonna have another conference and another symposium. So we're gonna have three symposiums in the next month and a half. One today, one in three weeks, and another in another three weeks. So that we, because we received so many proposals, so many proposals, so many presentations, of students that wanted to present in this conference with this topic. So we're going to extend out and create two more symposiums so that we have more fun, more wisdom, more ideas. So we want to thank all of the students, 100 of them who sent in proposals for this, present, for this symposium. And we selected the ones we felt would be the best to start out with, we're gonna have more. So we're gonna enjoy this. We're going to really listen, participate and think about those future generations. And the real key here is looking around us, what kind of world are we living? What can we make better? And if we make a world better for ourselves and for people around us, we know we're gonna create a better world for the future generations. If we see pollution, let's clean it up. If we see some injustice, let's clean it up. We do it in a way that's gonna be, that's gonna be constructive for the future generations. Obviously war and destruction makes it worse. How do we do things in such a way that are going to build lives, create a more sustainable economy, a more sustainable climate, a more sustainable environment, more sustainable work, how are we going to do that? And so these are the topics that we're going to be talking about today. And I'm really excited about this. And I think we're ready to start bringing in our first presenter, Pastor Dr. Joshua Babatunde. So welcome, Pastor Dr. Joshua Babatunde. I think your microphone is up and activated. Yeah. Thank you. I will God close. Bless. I'm going to close my presentation so that you can start yours. Okay. It's good to see you today. You're looking good. Thank you. God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I'm very glad to be one of those people that will present a talk today. 
Um, I was going to ask, place, Pastor, can, can, is it okay if you give just a little prayer to start off? Why not? Okay. Because okay. we're, in a, we're in a world that needs positive prayer. We're in a world yeah. that needs wisdom. So please, yeah. bless us. Okay, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for life you have given to us. Thank you for this universe. Thank you for your control the universe. The whole world is in your hand. There's nothing happening on earth that you don't know about. We give you glory, O oh God, for connect us to yourself while we are still on net. Oh Lord God, we thank you for this great international conference we are about to start today, Lord. We commit into your hands, hand over the program, everyone that will speak into your hands. Lord, we pray for divine wisdom from above in the name of Jesus. Father, we commit our word into your hand. The whole earth, we are passing through the great challenges, especially this pandemic of 19. We pray, Lord God of heaven, that your gracious hand will cure all these diseases. You will spare our life in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that today, as we speak, you will pass wisdom, understanding, grace for the whole world, and we will be able to leave behind a good legacy for the future, uh, for future generation in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father. I commit AIU University in hands to continue to increase them in wisdom, in grace, even to educate the whole world. Thank you, Father. Thank you for every benefit we receive from this school. Thank you, Lord, as we continue, continue with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much for that positive energy, for that, those positive thoughts and our connection with God. Yeah. The future generations are going to come from God, so we're all together in this. Amen. Yeah. Pastor Dr. Joshua Babatunde, do you have a presentation that you can share? Or do you want me to do you want me to put your presentation up on screen? Yes, put it up on the screen, please. And I'll okay. Speak. One second. Dr. Lambert? Yes. Miss Felipe, can you give me some uh, admin privileges, please? Yes. So I can start like broadcasting on Facebook. Where are you? I'm looking for there you are. Yes, thank yeah, you. I just saw your call come in. Mm -hmm. um, you have you have co-host permissions, it says. All right, let me let me see. It's giving me the option to remove them. Because I don't think we're streaming yet live on Facebook. I tried, but I don't have the login. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start the uh, presentation for here. Thank okay. You. Yeah, thank you. I'll, I will go ahead and move the slides for you as you talk. Just let me know when you're ready to go to the next slide. Thank you, thank you so okay. much. Yeah. As it has been said earlier, my name is Joshua Babatunde Ujo from University of Jos, Nigeria. It is a student of AIU, USC. I'm here to present a paper on title, the legacy that I or you will leave for future generation. The next slide. The introduction, what will happen if I have gone tomorrow? 
how will people remember me? And uh, uh, and will they remember me at all? In other words, I have to leave legacy that I can be remembered for. This question is with a deep thought. I know, and we try to dodge them as much as we can. Actually, many of us ask ourselves that only once in a lifetime, and it is often when it is too late to do anything about it and make a change. We come to the conclusion that there is nothing left for us after all. The years we have spent here and more sadly, it is like we have never lived. What we do as a result of this enlightenment is to spend our last year in regret, disappointment. Now, to avoid this, that is the reason for this conference. And then the, uh, the topic we are speaking on today is very important. We leave legacy for our future generation, good legacy. Now, I will try to divine what we mean by legacy. That's the next slide. What we mean by the legacy, it means what is our life legacy? No, not the point of life in general, but the point of yours, especially. The, sec the next, this the next slide, please. There we go. So, yeah. First, let us define legacy so we all on the same page. According to website, legacy can be defined as an uh, amount of money or property led to someone in a will. Oh no, even the modern definition of legacy is focused on money. Well, how about its second definition? Sometimes transmitted by or received from an acceptor or fidelity. However, the first definition highlights an acute problem in life. We think on legacy and therefore our personal value is derived from money. This is not the case. Rather, we need to think of our legacy as the positive thoughts and experience we leave by hand. How do we want people to think of us? What impact do I want to make? That is my legacy and none of it involves our lifetime any. And we move to the next slide, please. My personal legacy statement says, or a personal mission statement, is my declaration of how I would like to live my life and impart others from an ethical standpoint. It is different from goals, which are about achievement. The objective for a personal legacy statement is to clearly state my principle, how I intend to treat others, how I plan to care for my spiritual needs, and how I will share my legacy. Important things to remember. Keep your personal legacy statement private for yourself. I mean, for your eyes only. Follow your wiser self and only write what resonates with you. Know that sometimes the process can take a while and your personal legacy statement will change as your life involves. It is better to start with something imperfect 
perfect it over time rather than spend weeks or months trying to write a masterpiece. Just get something on paper and start to review it regularly. How to use my personal legacy statement. The simplest way to use my personal legacy statement is to refer back to it regularly and compare it to my behavior. I would suggest at weekly, many people read it once and twice per week, I mean per day. Over time, I will feel a gentle reprogram of my thought and behavior to be in a greater alignment with my statement. A sample of personal legacy statement and personal mission statement. Number one, integrity. Integrity is very important in life's one. In all I do, I endeavor to act in the best interest of all parties involved and exercise integrity with my personal and business dealings. Being, be a giver, I will first give myself in any new relationship and operate under the assumption that the other person is a giver on the experience proof otherwise. I forgive others for the, their mistakes and I try to understand things from their point of view. Positive thinking or speaking. I focus on the positive attributes of others when I speak to or about another person and never say something for the sole purpose of hurting them or blemish their reputation. Responsibility. I do not blame outside circumstances or other for my mistake or problems. When something bad happens, I see the role I play and admit to my part. I also treat other possessions and public space as if they were my own and exercise the same kind of care. I don't expect others to clean up after me and take care of my notes. Humility. Hello, can you hear me? I see something on my screen. Can you hear me there? Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. It, right now, we are live streaming on the internet now. Please continue. I think we lost connection with the audio. Oh, because apparently he's talking, but uh, is he is not he, there, John? Is is yeah, we'll, Dr. Joshua Rabunde? I don't see him. We have lost him. Ha desconectado el pastor Joshua. Oh, okay. We'll just have to wait until. He comes back, working out a connection. Yeah, I don't see him either. Do, any comments in chat? Any Anybody have? And yes, I see some in chat. If you're, if you want to record this, it is fine. It is fine to record this. Some of you have screen captures, video captures on your computers. You can definitely, you can definitely record this. 
that's one of the beautiful things about an online conference is that you can easily record it on your computer as you're watching it. I think if you have a, a video yeah, capture. Felipe, did you say we lost them? No, I just said that you're the host again. Oh, okay, thank you. Ya se está conectando el pastor. Oh, great. Here he comes. So yeah, we're, he's going down a list right now of words, you know, just like a simple word that you can put into your legacy statement. And each of these words creates a whole wisdom in itself. Integrity, just saying the word integrity, you don't have to use it in a sentence. It's just the word has this meaning to it. And I think this is a beautiful way to actually create a legacy statement. It's just, just, just with a word. Just with a word, it says so much. Hello? Hello, Pastor Doctor yeah. Joshua Babatunde Ojo. Are yeah. you with us again? I'm back. I'm back. Network yes. problem. I'm back. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. That's, I was talking that's, about that's the, that's the resurrection. Positive thinking. Yeah. Positive thinking and speaking. And uh, I focused on the positive attitudes of others when I speak all about another person. I never say something for so purpose of hurting them or blemish their reputation. Now responsibility. I do not blame outside circumstances or other for my mistake or problem. When something bad happens, I see the role I play and admit to my part. I also treat other possessions and public space as if they were my own and exercise the same kind of care. I don't expect others to clean up after me or take care of my need. Now I proceed to humility. Those are the legacy. Everyone has their own brand of intelligence. Everyone fights a battle. I'm not better than others. There is always something to learn from those around me. Sometimes I'm on top, sometimes I'm at rock bottom. Sometimes I ask smart, sometimes I act like idiot, just like everyone else done, the does. Other, I keep my life simple, free from clutter, disorder, and things that steal my energy for negative purpose, e.g. Additions, gossip, worry, trivial consent, curiosity. I am open to all kinds of outcomes. When things don't go my way, I act as third party observer and try to see my situation from a state of curiosity rather than disappointment. Action in spite of discomfort. When I know something is right, I immediately take action. Even if it is hard or cause short time discomfort, self-compassion. When I make mistakes, I forgive myself and I have compassion for my Fun and adventures, life will be passionate and engaged. I see the wondrous things every day. The ordinary becomes extraordinary to me because of how I love, who I interact with, and the joy of my pursuit. Nourishing my soul throughout the day, I take breath to recharge myself. This includes running, walking out, spending time to, in nature, meditation, bath, and so on and so forth. Family rule. My purpose in my family is to support my family member in their dreams, have fun with them, create last thing memories, be open and truthful, and be a good example. 
I will conduct myself in the family life in the manner that enrich our home by my presence. My family will be happy when I'm home. I will be a leader to my extended family. I will conduct myself in a way that makes my future children and wife proud. I will be loving, giving and supportive to my family. My present will always uplift, but I will have the backbone to speak the truth in a kind but direct way, even if it is sometimes uncomfortable in my workplace. I will influence people with example in my work. In working my talk, the principle center living, my focus will be on God's will and having fun. I will influence people with my example, have great integrity in all that I do. I will be guided by intuition and know that there is always a solution to any obstacle. When I commit to something, I will give it all my attention. I endeavor to deliver the higher quality possible. If I know that I cannot devote my time, heart and soul to an endeavor, I will pass on it. I will encourage and uplift others. My role as a citizen of the world, I hold the following principle. By the grace of God, forgiveness, empowering others, growing a garden of empowerment, diversity of race and culture is a gift. I will sustain life in physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual areas to forgive myself more and get on with doing good work. I will strive to uplift those around me and take action that benefit my community. I will use my skill and talent to serve. My focus will be on empowerment or bringing out the light in others, helping them recognize and expand their ability and see their interest, value, health. I will move every day. I will eat food that nourish my body, mind, and soul. I will refrain from alcohol, drugs, and other harmful substances. I will not be too uptight. I will enjoy life. I will eat an unprocessed diet focused on vegetable, healthy fats, food, proteins, moderate fruit, and limited carbohydrate. Every day I move my body and spend enough energy to feel healthy, balanced in good shape. Now my social role, I focus on finding and cultivate deep friendship with people who have similar value and whom I admire and trust. I admire and trust my career role. My career role, uh, I'm responsible and pay my bill, but focus on work that energize me. My vision and calling is more important to me than simply earning a high wage. When working with clients, I endeavor to do what is best for them and at the very least, do no harm. My community role, every year, I review what I'm doing to help others to be sure I'm on track. I make an effort to meet new people from different backgrounds and learn from everyone I come in contact with. Sharing my legacy, I make an effort to document important life moments as they happen and store this documentation in a safe place. I write letter to those who inspire me, either as it happens or once a year, when I reveal the happiness of my life. I make constant effort to tell others how grateful I am to have them in my life. And I'm specific about what I'm appreciate about them. The, to leave a legacy for our family and the world, our action can exert a positive influence far into the future. The choice that we make between now and the day that we depart this world have power to leave a lasting legacy. Our legacy might impact our family, our community, 
or even the world. Choosing to build a legacy will bring purpose to our life. We can upgrade our motivations beyond meeting daily needs and direct our attention towards fixing problems, helping others and support your, our descendants. Next slide. The legacy of life that I will leave to be remembered in future. Uh, number one, found a trust for my children. Found a trust for my children. One of the most common ways for leaving behind a legacy is to be quit an inheritance to my peers and the benefactors of my loved one to spare them hardship and stress. Two, to restore historical building. I found my passion in physical place, bringing an old home back to its former glory can stimulate the renewal of a whole neighborhood. My legacy is to establish the place as a tourist destination or at the very least, brighten the day of someone walking by the building. Three, found, I found a scholarship. Education is expensive, and all students appreciate anything that lightens their financial body. Even if I, can, I can't set up a huge scholarship fund, anything that I will contribute will make a difference for people who want to improve themselves and contribute to society. From my elementary school to tertiary education has been a tough experience for me. Struggle to finance my education. And this has motivated me. As God bless me, I'm going to contribute to other people's education, especially less privileged. Support medical research at any time, any day. I will support individual donations, fundraising activities, or the contribution of my own scientific expertise to reduce human suffering. Therapies, cures of terrible disease require long and concerted effort to overcome. And this can play an important part in other people's lives. Create a family archive. I will try as possible to create family archives. You know, children naturally want to know more about their ancestors, but that information slips away in the demand of daily life. A family archive could take the shape of a book that I write, a collection of family recipes, a scrapbook of photos, or genealogy carries us. My descendants will treasure the record that I assembled. The archives might be even end up in a museum. Start a trace, a tree planting program. Some community are defined by their tree or their lack of them. Tree can bear fruit, cool down hot or burn street, create habitat for animals, and cleansing pollution from the air. Imagine how the tree that are planted will keep growing when I might have gone. Set a good example. I will leave a mark on the world by how I live my life. People have been known to leave a lasting legacy because their actions inspire or encourage others. Parents, of course, build legacies with the example that they set for their kids. But our example as a professional artist or activist can draw others towards more fulfilling life. Life and authentic, I mean, live an authentic life. How we live an authentic life, the art to conform runs from within human society. But those who stand out often have the most compelling legacies. Living life aligned with our values. Dreams will give others the courage to stay true to themselves. 
which can be a priceless gift. Write a write or record a journal. The detail of my day-to-day -day life will fascinate my descendant. My journal entries or video message messages can build a connection between me and my descendant that remains strong when I have gone. Commitment to my family and to share typically, I will continue to maintain a relationship with my spouse or meeting the needs of our children challenges. The self-esteem of family members will stay strong when they know that we serve them because I want to, and not because I view it as an unavoidable duty. What do we value in life? Is it the family, integrity, hard work, the environment, or something else? Let us take some time to identify what's most important to us. We may even want to write our core value to help clarify them for ourselves. And others then talk about those values when it is appropriate. Tell our children and grandchildren what matter in life. Share our insight with younger co-workers. These are the worst people we quote when they say, my mom, my dad always said, make those work come. Prepare legacy letter. With legacy letter, people communicate message of pride, encouragement, personal belief, and advice to loved ones. And we arrange for the letter to be distributed upon my debt, and the recipients will feel value because I care to send them a final message of love and support. Do good deeds. Not everyone can make a memorable splash with multi-million dollars donation, but a life filled with small acts of kindness. We leave mark on the world, ranking leaves for an elderly neighbor, rescue a pet, emergency babysitting for a single parent, including look after the widows, render helping hands to orphans, an orphanage home, tossing the life of the prisoners, or helping someone get a job, are all things that we add up to our legacy. To support a charity, many organizations already exist where we can build a legacy. Our financial gifts and volunteer labor can help charitable organization as if its mission. Volunteer for causes of community service. When you decided to make a room in our schedule for volunteering, will nurture the gratitude and appreciation of those who benefit from our efforts. Our communities have ongoing volunteering opportunity. Build a legacy by being someone who always so up, continue to develop my career. The pursuit of new credentials and knowledge could help me attain a higher position. I will eventually influence my field by improving techniques and standards and mentoring new talents. Improve my workplace. People like to complain about their jobs, but I could focus on solving problems instead. I said, held is leadership program, address safety hazards, or develop efficient alternative to wasteful practices. One way to leave a legacy at work is to become a mentor to younger team members. You can also mentor people in other organizations such as charities, where you volunteer, passing on your knowledge and wisdom to the next generation. It's rewarding in itself, and it's also ensure you will leave a lasting impact on the organization you care about. 
organize family reunion. Our relatives, we value the effort that we put into organizing annual gatherings. We can foster new family traditions and provide a venue that helps aunts, uncles, cousins, forge lifelong bonds, give someone a job. We could give someone a chance and extend a job offer that could pave the way for that person to build a better life. Even that first job you gave to a teenager, to mom alone, who put a person on the path to a responsible life. By God's grace, I have established a construction company where many artisans can be engaged and be able to take care of their family. Donation to a domestic violence center. Those who suffer abuse behind closed doors often have nobody to turn to. Our donation of money, time, supply, or even real estate to a charity that helps people escape domestic violence we serve a hand up to those living in fear. Respect order whenever possible. For most people, the world is an unbearable for them. Incessity, please. Our willingness to meet others on an equal footing with nurture kindness and gratitude to them, this is how to leave a legacy when we lack financial means. Fight and injustice. Fight and injustice. Our greatest legacy might emerge when we defer, despair and apathy, and demand justice. Although campaigning against pollution, discrimination, or a wrongful conviction might feel hopeless. Less. So many, our de determination could correct an injustice inflicted on a person or community. Imparting knowledge as a lecturer, I will endeavor to work hard through research and to impart the knowledge gained to my student at all level. Also to be punctual to my lecture period. The influences an individual has on order is also an important aspect of legacy. People who set positive example for others through their actions and words can leave a powerful legacy of good deeds and appropriate behavior. Parents and grandparents greatly impact their children, helping to mold their beliefs about family values and love from an early age that will impact them and future generations. Those who exhibit greatly leave a legacy of selflessness and courage everyone. Impact and influences others, people in some way, including friends, acquaintances, co workers, and neighbors. People can also leave an impact on the larger community. In conclusion, when a person dies, the mark the individual left on the world represent that individual's legacy. While a person's legacy can involve money, the concept of legacy is much larger than the value of an individual's estate. It is about the richness of the individual's life, including what that person accomplished and the impact he or she had on people and places. Um, ultimately, ultimately, the story of a person life reflects that individual's legacy. Thank you for listening, and God bless you. I'm true. If there's any question, can you hear me? God bless you. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you for such a comprehensive <laughs> presentation. Everybody in chat is wondering if they can get a copy of your presentation. 
Yeah, I think it's with you there. I send you, I can resend it. We can I actually, can resend it. I could actually upload it into chat and people can download it. Would you approve of that? Yes. And also I would like if 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 you can help me publish it, I would be grateful. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, if and, you can uh, help me publish it. Hearing you talk about the presentation is much better than just having the presentation. So we have some of the some of the participants are recording your presentation. We are recording your presentation. So your presentation is going to be having a legacy because we're, we are recording it. Thank you, sir. And if anybody has any questions or comments, please write them into chat. And now is the time for questions and answers. A lot of ideas were presented. Um, Elijah says the world needs an undisputed truths that will turn the world upside down. How do you respond to that idea? Well, then. The world needs undisputed truths that will turn the world upside down. How do you, yeah. how do you respond? It is only the truth that can sustain the world. But today we see in the world, truth is very scarce. Even some, even the family, some of the member of the family, some of them are, uh, you can't depend on them. In the government, you see when they are campaign, they will tell you a lot of things. When they got the power, they divert from what they have said. We say the trouble we have in the world today is lack of the truth, lack of sincerity. If when we begin to operate in truth and sincerity, the world will be a place to live, a place to stay. But the problem we have in the world today is lack of the truth. Let individual in our little corner sustain the truth. Let our ye be ye. Even according to the words of God, he said, let your ye be ye and your nay be nay. So if you want to really hold and have the life integrity, the legacy is one of the legacy I desire and I will continue to uphold to leave a hand for my people. Truth must be found in my mouth, in my dealing. Thank you. Hello? Oh, oh, oh. Your, okay, your microphone. Hello? Do you hear me? Hello? Hello? We're hearing you. Okay. I think I've responded to that question. Any other question? Please ask questions. Excuse me. Good morning, everybody from Brazil. Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you. I can good hear you. Me. Good morning, Pastor Joshua Babatundi. Good morning, friends from AIU. Uh, congratulations, Pastor Joshua. Your presentation was very, very inspirational. You, you shared with us very inspirational words about family, 
about values, about integrity. Congratulations. It was very inspiring to know. Uh, please, if, if you could choose a single, a single legacy to which we would share with our children, which one you would choose? One single legacy to the future, to the, our children, which one would we, would we choose, please? I will leave a legacy of integrity for my children. Integrity in all what I do. I will show their example of integrity and I will teach them to live the life of integrity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Yeah. May I ask you a question? Yeah, uh, sure, go ahead. Um, I am a Charles Ifobo from Nigeria. Uh, we are in a world today where the younger generation prefers uh, money and materialism over and above integrity. And they, uh, in considering the type of legacy to leave behind for your family or admirers. I think consideration should be given to the type of legacy that they would appreciate. So in this wise, um, you really have to make efforts towards leaving a legacy of materialism or integrity. That's my question. Your question? I'm not getting you clear. You are saying, are you talking about money? Yes, as I a said legacy? that in today's world, like the my yeah. question comes as follows. When you are leaving a yeah. legacy for your children, it should mm. be something that they should cherish. Yes. Then considering the fact that today's in today's world, the younger generation prefers materialism over and above some other considerations. So in the side, for you, between materialism and integrity, what do you think you should strive more uh, as legacy they are going to leave behind for your children? Yeah, the integrity is most important, but Nevertheless, you know that not everybody are blessed at the same level. You know, you can still leave some material things for your children so that they will not suffer after you might have left. But integrity, you must teach them because integrity will sustain the materials you leave for them. They will be able to manage their materials and serve them. But if you do not leave legacy of integrity life for them, they will squander all those money, those uh, houses, estate, even within a few years. And they will uh, uh, turn, I mean, come back to a zero level that they will suffer. But when you have taught them integrity life, you will see them, they will be building on it. And the little inheritance you left behind for them, they will be able to maintain it and sustain it. Thereby, they will grow and establish themselves and be able to stand on their own and live integrity and, and a more blessing for their own children. God bless you. Thank you very much, Pastor. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we have a few more minutes for questions. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna need uh, maybe like three four minutes after eight fifty a.m. local time in Easter time because we're having some uh, difficulties. Uh, so um, if you have any any more questions, please uh, type them in the chat. Uh, Doctor Lambert, he needs to restart his equipment right now. 
So we just we just have to hold for him a little bit. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. you You're welcome. Me? I can hear you. Uh, You're welcome. Thank you. From Malabo, Equatorial Guinea. I uh, very appreciate truly the impartation I received. But as an African, in terms of legacy, we have the problem of our culture now. Yeah. Uh, how, go, how are we going to do with our culture? Because when we want to leave some legacy, we need to reduce the culture and be more practical in uh, the environment. And the Western culture sometimes impact more and many things. So I need uh, your answer and your idea. How are we going to do with our culture as an uh, African? Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Now, still, yes, we will still go back to integrity. You know, as Africa, our culture differs. There are some culture draw us closer to God. There are some culture that leads to uh, some kind of life that do not edify. So the life you lead, integrity you lead, you teach your children, they will be able, you know, to manage their life, to live their life without negative influences of our culture. Yes, culture that is positive, have positive impact in our life. There are some culture that have negative impact. Teach your children, your culture that have positive impact, that will benefit them, that will make them to leave a legacy of integrity, of good living, of good behavior. You, 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 that is what we need to do. Even if you are in position to train others, to teach others, so to then train them by example. The exemplary life you live will last long in their life. So as you an Africa, I believe you will agree with me. Some of our culture is not edified. And some of our culture is edified. Some of our culture taught us how to respect others. But there are some culture that draw us away from God, that lead to immorality, uncleanness, that can cut life short. So you should identify them and let your children know the impact those culture can play in their life. And then uh, so then the right one to be used, you can't force them, but by God's grace and prayer, they will leave and stay. If God can help us, God will help them. Thank you. Did I answer you? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Question. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I am Michelle Haman from Nigeria. I, I, I cannot see your face. Face your screen very well. Let us see your face. Yeah. Can you see my face now? Not quite. Bend your screen a little. Okay. Aha, good. I am okay. Michelle Haman okay. from okay. Nigeria. Yeah. You are welcome. Uh, Pastor, thank you for your presentation. It's yeah. a very enriching presentation. Uh, but um, I have a little concern. You talked about integrity, legacy, 
but you have not made mention of a life of selflessness. What governs the world today is selfishness. Everyone or most people think about themselves and their families. That is why, as you have made mention of leaders who met, who make um, a lot make, of promises. Make, promises. They make promises. Once they get to power, to the position of leadership, they only accumulate for themselves, for their friends and family members. The most important thing today we have to lay emphasis on is the life of selflessness. Living for others. Living yeah. for others. We live for this generation and we think about the next generation. When budgets are set aside for hospitals, for roads, for education, and these projects are diverted, and children don't go to school because they don't have infrastructure, people cannot move and trade because they don't have roads to move their goods. We have a problem of selfishness. Integrity, for the sake of integrity, does not mean anything. Because somebody can be a man of integrity just for, for selfishness. I want to see myself. I want to make people see me as a man of integrity in the society so that can, I can be respected. But if that integrity does not have selflessness as foundation, it is not integrity. So what we should teach our children this is life of self, selflessness. Whatever I do, do I do it for the whole community or I am doing it just for my selfish purpose? So life of integrity. We, you were talking about um, uh, uh, African cultures. We used to know that in Africa, people, a child in the community is the child for everyone. Everyone can send him, everyone can educate him, everyone can scold him if he misbehaves, if he goes against the norms of the community. So we didn't know this life of selfishness, everybody for his own. So pastor, as a man of God, I know that you have many people you are leading, people who are under you, try to lay emphasis on the life of selflessness, living for others, living for today and living for tomorrow. Those who are coming after us, let us make them come and find the foundation, the conducive environment prepared for them so that the trouble we are going through today, they won't face it. Thank you very much. God bless you. When you get uh, this paper, you will see a lot there, you know. We cannot say all at this moment because of the time. I'm so grateful for your contribution and God bless you. We have seen a lot of things happening around us all over the world, not only in Africa. Serviceness is in operation people always, we see a lot of politicians, what they turn our money to. For example, you know, ETF gives scholarship. Uh, they apply even for my PhD that I couldn't get. And some people, you know, uh, <laughs> they hold it to themselves. So, well, your point is very good and I believe maybe other people will still touch that area when they present their own paper. So what you have just said is taken, and I believe that you, the, the message has gone around. People will take note of that. Then when you get my paper, you will see a lot of things there. 
that even our neighbor to say out. God bless you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Pastor uh, Dr. Joshua Babatunde. Uh, we are running out of time now, and you have done an excellent, comprehensive presentation. I did make the presentation available into chat. So if anybody wants it, they can click on it and download it. There's so many ideas there to inspire, giving a legacy, a positive legacy, a constructive legacy to future generations. This is just an excellent presentation. Thank you, sir. Tree, creating trees, giving somebody a job, going to see a widow, making someone who's alone happy. There's so many ideas, so many wonderful ideas in your presentation that I would suggest going back and listening to this recording again, just to get more ideas because there's so many ideas in this presentation. Thank you, Thank you so, so much. Um, we're going to move on now to the next presenter. Um, uh, Pastor Dr. Joshua Babatunde, do you want? Do you have anything more to say before we finish? Uh, well, I was supposed to do my graduation since March last year, but till now I'm still struggle for to clear my tuition fees. That is the problem, and uh, I'm trusting God. Maybe. Before October run out, I'll be able to clear the money. I was denied scholarship from end year. So uh, even I have to appeal if they can let me do the graduation and hold on with my certificate. When I get money, I clear, then they can send my certificate. Because the time uh, I took from my working place in the <coughs> university here, almost almost run out. And also, if you can help me to uh, to print, I mean, to publish my paper, I would be glad to add it to my CV. God bless you. Thank you. Doctor, doctor, one thing you can do is you can do a webinar and teach courses at AIU. That will give you extra scholarship. So okay. we, can, we can talk about that and set you up with something. So you have a lot to say, you have a lot to teach. And so you can, you can, you can do that and create value for your, for your, for your situation. Thank you, so, thank you. So you can write to me and we can further discuss how to go about doing that. Okay, I will, I will. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah.